What's up, everyone? Hello, everybody. Our Colliders. It is April 13th, 2024. Welcome to the Collision and Battle of the Belts post show. My name is Cresta Star, and I'm here with the beautiful, the illustrious, our dark maiden, Iridian. <laughs> Cresta, could you believe that not even a week ago, we were together in the club, partying, having a good old time, and... I am so glad that I got to meet you. Super exciting. It was a great time. And I'm super excited that we're chatting now back at, you know, just what we love, you know, wrestling. I'm here for the grabs. I've been on fight for all day. I was on Grab City earlier. And here I am today pulling double duty. And where's Rick? Where's Rick? Rick was at the show, y'all. He gets a pass this one wow. time. But Rick, we... And it's his birthday. So... We so give, him, we'll a give him a pass. We'll give him a pass. If Rick pops up, he said he might be doing a little on the coverage ground. If he pops up, we're all going to wish him a happy birthday and cook him just a touch. Not a lot, just a touch. Just a little bit. <laughs> but we are going to start cooking on this AEW collision, ladies and gentlemen. We got three hours of wrestling, which in my personal opinion should be made illegal for non-pay-per-view okay. purposes. This is too long. I couldn't even enjoy the last match because I am tired. So if we <laughs> power through this and you get a power hour... Don't be mad, but we're happy that you're here. And if you're happy that you're here, give us a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to Fightful Select, the best five bucks in the business. It'll give you all the scoops. They got scoops. I don't know what scoops they got because I'm not the scoops guy. That's Sean Ross Sat. But they got Axe Grabsity. And mm -hmm. if you ask guys real nicely, and you might do an Axe Crest to Star, I'll give you stuff, but I don't know which what I'm going to give you. <laughs> it's going to be a surprise. It's a little grab bag. A little grab bag, a little grab bag, like ask Crusher, like, what did you think of tonight's match? Watch the show. That's what I thought of tonight's match. <laughs> also, if you're really feeling fancy, go ahead and give us a super chat if you want to join in on the conversation. Any comment amount, dollar amount gets it read on air. We also have Humper Chats, humperchats.com. You go there and type your dollar amount. We just get to keep a little bit more of the proceeds, and it helps keep the lights on. It helps me and Iridian get paid. It helps you guys get these scoops. So let's get into collision. First, let me ask you, Iridian. What did you think of Collision this evening? Man, um, I think Collision had some gems, right? But I think overall, it wasn't my favorite Collision that I've seen. I think it was kind of like in the middle. Um, I would maybe rate it like a 5.7 out of 10. I don't know um, if that's close to what you would rate it. But um, I thought the best match of the night definitely had to go to BCC versus Kyle and Hobbs. I thought that match took the cake. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to hold you. That match, the, that opening BCC match was great, but I was exhausted by the end of it. And <laughs> then I really couldn't enjoy the Athena um, Velvet match because by the time we got to it, it's, I'm tired. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's it's not fair. It's not fair. Um, I think overall Collision was okay, but three hours is just too long. Too long. Yeah. And Bad Leather Belts, there was two championship matches and one Eliminator Contenders match, which doesn't – I don't understand. I don't understand. And, and we'll get to that because, you know, people have their feelings about Battle of the Belts, but – Collision, I'm waiting for the promos to start back up, you know, like how they used to, and people would just cut their promo of who's going to mm. fight tonight. And that still has not happened. And now we got Daddy Magic with Tony Schiavone doing commentary all night, which I thought that was a nice surprise. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. I kind of yeah. lived for it. They do need a third voice because mm. the both of them were like, what are these moves? You better call Excalibur. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was hilarious because Nigel was missing tonight. I don't know what he was doing. Probably he was at the club doing something. He was I don't doing know. magic. <laughs> <laughs> but man that was a really nice uh reference to excalibur um but it's interesting because daddy magic is also a wrestler so he should know the names of the moves listen just because i be on podcast don't mean i listen to him <laughs> <laughs> just because i'm a wrestler don't mean i know what what's up you know what i mean i just work here dog i just work here <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get into the work. But before we really do that, Iridian, I'm going to ask you one time and one time only. Mm. Do you want to talk about that CC footage or not? not we can spend five minutes at best. If you don't want to, we're getting right into it. Let's do it. Do you want to talk about it? I'm I'm down. I was here for it. I lived. <laughs> You are the only other person I know who lived for it. 
<laughs> I was gagged because I thought honestly that it, they were not going to show it. I'm like, it's going to be a sick, I, I, it, it's going to be something. I don't know what it's going to be. But when they started rolling the thing and it was security footage, I was like, <gasps> and I like I had really my thought we were going to get what's his name? Oh my God, Brandon Cutler. Like from the I, I, what I thought was going to happen didn't happen. And when the CC footage happened, I really showed. I was like. Oh, this is professional wrestler, baby. Yes. <laughs> so um, someone in the comments is saying that I was cheering for Jack. Absolutely. Yesterday I was at Windy City Riot. Mr. Jack Perry himself came out with a Chicago flag. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm here for it. His jacket said, cry me a river. I was applauding. I was a fan. I was ready to buy a t-shirt, but they were all sold out on his website. So now I got to wait for them to restock. But that footage was insane. And I was here for it. I live for the cheese, man. I live for the backstage gossip. Give me Come more. Come on now. Give me more. People are like, well, it's too late. This is bringing up old feelings. And I can understand and recognize that. Mm -hmm. But I also understand this is a professional wrestling company. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use, if I'm going to make rock stew, I'm going to use these rocks. Right. <laughs> I'm going to use these rocks. And, and was it childish? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I've seen worse. I've seen worse on AEW. I've seen where Cody smashed the throne with a sledgehammer and damn near ran it over with the same DX tank. And what is he doing now? Champion of that same company was talking crap on you. Just laugh, just laugh, just laugh, just laugh. You know, you know what? I think it was like a, a lose lose situation, right? Because if mm -hmm. they if they didn't put it out, people were always going to say, "Well, we haven't seen the footage. We don't really know what happens." But also now look at how people are acting. Not me though. I'm here for it. Give me more footage. Give me all the footage all the time. The only adult thing I have to say about it is the lesson and the takeaway here. You can't choke your coworkers. Don't do it. Don't recommend it, guys. You can think it, but don't, don't choke you. It's not assault is assault, and that's no laughing matter. Don't choke your coworkers. But also in the context of wrestling, yo, y'all are petty, and that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> grow up, dude. <laughs> but actually, don't grow up, dude. Just, just walk away <laughs> next time. Just walk away. Don't grow up, but don't but grow up. <laughs> All right, that's it. That's the five minutes. We're not talking about it no more. I'm sure you can get your discourse elsewhere about it. I'm glad I found someone else who thought it was just this was this was just jokes. Right, it was good. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, first match of tonight on AEW Collision, we start off with a promo from Brian Danielson and Claudio Castagnoli, pretty much saying we're going to heck you up, Don Callis family. You got, any, you got any notes on that? Yeah, the fact that Claudio was like, You're, it's not going to fly. It's not going to fly, all right? Brian Danielson said, violence is our specialty. And we knew that already. I don't think he had to like reiterate uh -huh. it, but... um. I immediately went to like, oh no, there's gonna be blood. So I don't know if that's where you went immediately because we're the same with <laughs> with that. But I was just a little scared. I'm like, okay, I think they mean business tonight. Oh, and speaking of people that mean business, ladies and gentlemen, don't drive in Discord. I mean, <laughs> no, hey, nobody pay attention to what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> just nobody pay attention. Like I'm keeping eyes on the road. And How was the show, Rick? Rick? Our eyes on the ground. Rick, Rick in the street. Rick in the street. Oh, what's the word? Uh, Rick, Rick trying to merge on the I-75 North at the moment, but I, I'm here. And uh, yeah, no, the show was enjoyable. A little long. And then they, uh, after it ended, it, it, it didn't end. They just started like doing more Ring of Honor matches. And I'm like, Tony Khan, you're crazy. I'm out of here. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I'm old now. Like, I am old as hell, and I, I can't be watching no wrestling after 11 o'clock. I'm done. He said, Tony Khan, I'm old. I'm sorry. I got to go. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> Did they have matches before this collision? Yes. No? Yeah, they started. They started. They filmed. They filmed three or four matches for Ring of Honor. Then they uh -huh. did all a collision, Battle of the Belts, and then they started taping more matches for Ring of Honor. And I'm like, I'm out. I tap. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to roll. Like, I, nice. truth be told, I, truth be told, I would have left if, like, whenever Athena and Red Velvet were going to go on, that was my last match of the night. I had decided. I that answer. That's a respectable answer. Yeah. That is a and, very And, of course, Tony, Tony Khan being the crafty mf -er that he is decides to put that on the main event because he knows – he knows that I would have ducked out after that match 
and I can't bitch about it either because it's like, yay, women, main event, woo! So then I become a hypocrite if I complain, but I'm not. And no one likes those guys. (laughs) Well, we also want to say happy birthday, Rick. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday. Everybody in the chat, sing one, two, three. Okay. <laughs> happy birthday. You got hit it with happy birthday to <laughs> you. Every, everybody in the chat. Everybody, how do we how do we chat sing? Everybody start typing away one letter at a time. One letter at a time. Someone type H, the next one types A, the other person yeah. types E. Keep it going. <laughs> Oh my goodness! How how are we, ladies? I, I how the hell, by the way, did we all miss each other in Philadelphia? Okay, we were just talking about this. I'm like, Cresta, could you believe last week you and I were in the club together, and then Rick, where were you? Not in the club with us. I, I no one invited me to a club. It was Wale Mania. The invite was out oh. there. <laughs> oh, okay, I gotcha. Yeah, no, I, I missed out on that. Yeah, I think we just all had completely different schedules, and yeah. Jeez, it was crazy. Philly was was intense, but we still have so many other opportunities. Yeah. Oh, it, heck, if, it, if, it wasn't, so. if it wasn't for, like, literally bumping into her, I would have missed Kate completely. We just happened to both be at WWE World at the same time. Like, just yeah. killing time before Monday Night Raw. Like, so. That, that, you that, that was Monday Night till Raw? Monday? Say that again? You say till Monday? Oh, yeah, I'm the same. Wow, that's Girls, crazy. I just attended my sixth wrestling show in a week. I am committed like you read about. That's crazy. It's still real to him, damn it. <laughs> but I finally draw the line at extra Ring of Honor matches. He said, I draw the line. I got it. it has to stop somewhere. When will the madness stop? I, I can get jiggy with the CC footage, but I cannot get jiggy with extra Ring of Honor. I got to go home. I'm tired. I have a family. I have a family. <laughs> Oh my goodness! So, it's, Rick, it's out of ten, what would you give the show overall tonight? Man, um, I give it about a six and a half or a seven. Okay, there, that's fine. There, there wasn't a whole lot that I was like outside of the ladies' matches. I wasn't really emotionally invested in any of it, but the main event for Collision still slapped. Claudio is incredible. Mm. I'm never going to complain about getting to watch Brian Danielson do his work uh, in person, especially since I know those dates are limited now. Um, but I'll, I'll say this much. Tony and um, Azuma had... Damn. They, they killed it. And then Athena... And Red Velvet cooked, pun intended, at the end of the night. Like, I'm, I'm a happy guy. Like, And those promos, by the way, tonight by Serena Deeb and Thunder Rosa both, it was a good night for the ladies. Yeah. I can't it, – it's like Tony Khan knew it was my birthday or something. Like, he he put on he, – he had quality women's wrestling content tonight uh, outside of the HLA. I don't know how I feel about the HLA, but, you know, it, it is what it is. So, Rick, in the chat, people are talking about Athena and that she might have been injured. Did you see any of that? I did not, no. Okay. No. Athena might just be a really good seller like Nick Nemeth, because I'd be thinking Nick Nemeth is dead every match, and she just might be a good seller. Kyle O'Reilly as well, because Kyle O'Reilly looks like he dies almost every match, and he walks it off like it's nothing. Yeah. Um, Rick, we had just talked about the CC footage. We spent no more than five minutes on it. Since you're here, we would like to add an additional two minutes to the clock if you want to spend that much time on it. Um, and oh. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah. Hey, we saw it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, seriously, I don't know what it accomplished, if anything, because... It's amazing how we all watch the same thing, but none of us watch the same thing. If True. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, no one Chris and no I watch one... the same thing. <laughs> yeah, Chris, yeah, yeah. Me and Iridium watch the same thing. We watch. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, maybe, like, maybe we all watch the same thing. I don't know what your opinion on it is, but, like, I don't think literally anybody's mind changed. Mm. Like, yeah. That's yeah. what the guys on Grab City were saying earlier. Me and Iridian thought it was funny. Mm. We thought this was comedy. We thought that, like, yo, you're petty, grow up, but also don't grow up. This is wrestling. 
Perfect. Other people were like, right. hey, this is stupid. It's too late. We've all moved on from this. Why are you showing it? And in my mind, I'm like, why not? I know. <laughs> like, here's the thing. I have seen worse on a baseball field. I watched a grown man one time charge the entire Pittsburgh Pirates dugout. I watched a grown man one time drop kick a dude with baseball cleats. I have seen so much worse than what that was. That was absolutely nothing to me based off of the 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 blurry video that we saw with no audio, by the way. Like Okay, but like the audio wasn't gonna change anything, right? The audio wasn't no, gonna change no. nothing. At the end of the day, you can't choke your I think the only person who came out looking good from this. Is Chris Hero Chris the Hero? person who doesn't want to talk about it? Because Chris Hero's face at the end needs to be on a shirt. It was the oh my fucking god face. Well, that is, <laughs> and, and, and Samoa Joe just being a total unit. Like, Yo, him just in the background, like all right, with the shade on Mac dance, like what the fuck is going on? All right, you gotta do a match. <laughs> and shout outs to Hook for just chilling. <laughs> that nothing bothers that man. Just chilling. <laughs> He I aspire to be that level of unbothered as hook. Oh, they're fighting? That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> but at, at the end of the day, like, I look at, you know, I listen to, you know, people like Mark Henry say, this shit happens all the time. Mm. It happens all the time. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know. It, it's it, worse than wrestling. And I, again, I, I, that's why I'm not taking it that deep. And people are like, well, this just makes them look stupid. No, it doesn't. Like, doesn't. I think if you're reading too much into the situation, it can. But, like, I, I, I literally seen them do, like, I've seen works on WWE television making fun of people of WCW. That's all I'm going to say. I, I thought of a very specific example, and I don't feel comfortable saying that on air. So, <laughs> yeah, look, at just to finish it off, right? Like, we heard Punk's side of the story, which, by the way, he didn't come out and offer up the information. He was asked about it, and he answered honestly, which he's always going to try to answer or at least give his version of the truth. And from what I saw, everything that he said happened lined up to a T uh, in that video. And Tony Khan responded, let's all just move on now, all right? Like, let's just move on. Cool. Hopefully, you know, everybody can find some, some peace of mind out of this. Now, if they want to show any more footage, now I'm expecting Brandon Cutler to play all parts. So All of them. Mm -hmm. All of them. Don't play with me. <laughs> <laughs> and Dan Housen, a little cameo. Yeah. Where the hell is Dan Housen, by the way? Like In hell. <laughs> get that guy on my TV screen again, please. Okay. Rick, I, I don't know how much you were going to stay on here. We we literally just got into our first match uh, with okay. the House of Black and Top Flight. Are you going to stay for the whole show? I As your friend, as someone who cares about you, I think you should be on 10 and 2 and you should drive. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, I'm starting to see some traffic build up, actually. So I'm just going to – I gave you all my two cents. Like, and here's the other thing. Without notes – Fuck it. I'm not going to remember a damn thing anyway. So. I respect it. Respectable. Respect it. Well, happy birthday, Rick. Thanks for popping Thank in. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Enjoy I wanted to stop your in. Night, Rick. Yep. Have a good night. Bye. Good night, Rick. Bye. We good love time. Rick. Happy. What, 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 a, what a good guy that Rick is. Great. What a nice young Showing man. Showing up for work on his birthday. That's going to be me next month. <laughs> My birthday is on TNA and I'm showing up. I'm showing up late. Here. <laughs> All right, let's finally talk about Collision, ladies and gentlemen, the show that you actually put your butts in seats for. We open up the show after that BCC promo with House of Black versus Top Flight. They did mention that Dante Martin, no, Darius, no. Who was in this match? Dante was not, I want to say. I want to say Darius wasn't Dante was because Darius was getting his pilot's yes, license. Yeah, and they made it. They they made it a point to put that on on commentary because they said it a few times. Yeah, I think it was Dante was in the match. Dante was, it was yeah, Darius. Yeah. yeah. So that match was pretty good. I have to say, if we go back to that CC footage, another unsung hero is Malachi Black walking over with his coffee like, "Hey, chill out, come, come." <laughs> Chris Hero and Malachi Black are like, these two need to be on a shirt. Chris Hero's face like, 
Yeah. Malachi Black with the coffee, like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> like, when they guys calm down. <laughs> wow. This match was really good. Um, I like Daddy Magic on commentary tonight. Him and Tony Schiavone's chemistry was so endearing. It was really sweet. This match, I mean, respectively, Dante did his best. Action Andretti did his best. I knew Matt Seidel was taking that pin, but House of Black beasted these kids, these young gentlemen. They're not children. They're not kids. House of Black beasted on these people. Brody King just woofed a lot. And honestly, the end sequence with that triple kick with the power bomb on Matt Seidel in the corner, the kick from the outside, I I need workers comp after watching that match. House of Black gets the win here um, after taking the pin on Matt Seidel. What are your thoughts on this, Iridian? You know, it's crazy because immediately commentary was like, well, House of Black has won over, like, I don't know if they said like 23 matches or 20 something matches, but I'm like, that is never a good way to start. Like, <laughs> you are already telling me that House of Black is going to win. Like, yeah. <laughs> But they really did the best that they could, right? You know, it was top flight ish, top flight mm -hmm. at eight, because um, you know, Action Andretti and the addition of Matt Seidel. Um, they had some really cool moments. I know they had like some stereo pump kicks, which went into like a really cool sequence of everyone being able to do like one move to each other, which I always think that's super cool because it just looks cool on yeah. a camera. Um, and then they like teamed up against Brody because you have to team up against Brody. You have to jump him because uh, you're never gonna win, right? And then he, he just ended up kicking out at one. Which I'm like, bro, this is it. <laughs> I, I don't want to be I that guy, win. but Brody King low key reminds me of Goldberg back in the day. You literally kind of got a cattle prod him. I'm not saying I'm not saying do that. I'm not saying go. I'm not saying go full WCW. But like Brody King, Will Hobbs, War, those other people. Like I, I want to beat you up, but I got the cattle prod just in case. <laughs> just in case, because you never know. Like I listen, even tonight I saw Will Hobbs take match. I saw Shane Taylor take match chops, and they looked at him like, "Stop playing mm. with me!" Like I, I gotta, I gotta hit you with the little extra, little, uh. just in case you got a double tap. <laughs> Not the double tap. You got a double tap to make sure. Cause I can't, I can't take you down with regular moves, bro. Like you're an immovable. Brody King is a large. Like <laughs> where they make yeah. that at? He's an extra medium husky. Okay, <laughs> you gotta really put in that work. And the fact that three guys cannot put this man down, I was like, this is it. You're, it's call it, call it right now, bro. And then the worst part to me is like the quote unquote skinniest person in the group, Malachi, is the most dangerous person in that group. Yeah, like. <laughs> 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 that's the most dangerous person in the group because what what he lacks in width that man will knock your block off bro like yikes Insane. this is a good match yeah, i think it was a showcase in my opinion for dante dante's been doing amazing work i just top flight is one of those groups where it's like if it's not dante it's darius and if it's not darius it's yeah, dante we, we can't catch a break and that sucks because mm. you know i think early on we really saw the potential of like these two young guys their brothers are coming up and you're just like it makes sense they're high flyers and it was just one bad thing after another and they're still trying to like figure it out mm. i'm hoping that they get it together soon but who knows I'm thinking now that there's space in the tag division, especially after this tournament, maybe we could do something with the trios title. But I'm hoping the best for um for top flight. In the post match, uh Malachi and Brody and Buddy were all spicy in the camera talk about kick your head off. I know you saw that. It was good, Adam Copeland. You old. <laughs> I didn't say that. I made that up, but that's how I felt like they were saying. <laughs> With the direct shots at Adam Copeland. But, bro, tell me Brody King just didn't look at the day like, yo, you're all, I'll, I'll knock your head off. Stop playing with me, bro. So, <laughs> that's basically what he says. <laughs> that's what you got from it. I love it. That's what I got, that's what I got from all three. And I was like, yo, when I catch you, Ricky. <laughs> when I catch you, I'm going to catch you, okay? So you better not let me. And when I really catch him spitting in your face, Velops around <laughs> Next, we have Lexi Nair um, backstage with Timeless Tony Storm, Ryan May, and Luther. Mm. I got to tell you, I don't know what this promo was about. All I remember is her saying, you want me to kiss your bum? Well, so do a thousand other perverts. I'm like, yo, Tony Storm, you live in the gimmick. <laughs> you know she reads the comments. She knows. She knows. So I live. 
I, I love this timeless Tony Storm, but it's like, again, I aspire to be that level of Delulu. Delulu is the Salulu, and Mariah May is Delulu in it too, because that's Tony Storm 2.0 coming out to our old music and everything. I pop every time. It's so good. It's so good. And she's making it work. I love that they actually kept Mariah as Tony. Um, yes. This promo, I don't know what happened either. Like I was listening and I was looking, but like my mind was just not processing. So I'm glad they came out later and it helped. It helped, but it I, don't helped. I, I couldn't tell you what this promo was about. I'm sorry. I don't want to be that guy, but I'm going to be that guy. Next, we have Chris Jericho asking Taz to talk to Hook to talk to him. Mm. Now... I'm gonna be real with you. This this wasn't this was not it. This was not it. This was not how you asking this man's dad to make his son talk to you. That's wild. <laughs> and then Taz was like, well, I don't know, like he's his own man. Like, bro, that's embarrassing for you, Jericho. I mean, at that I point, mean, like, you're getting a his manager or something, like yeah, like I don't know. Also, I feel like Chaz, Taz would choke you if you ask him too many questions. He would. He was looking like he was about to hurt somebody just on the way out. So um, Jericho, I, I, you know what? I'm kind of hoping that. <laughs> <laughs> like, Don't touch my son. What do you think this is? You know what? We're going to change the mood light. Mood. We got a super chat from our good friend, Chad, 722, saying Collision and Battle of the Belts blew away Dynamite this week. You know, that's a good opinion to have, but I will say we got some great footage on Dynamite, and that honestly, it's <laughs> it, it my, and it honestly might feed me for months. Okay, I'm I'm gonna be thinking about this all the time. <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> Listen, my complaint with Collision <clears throat> Battle of the Belts was that it was too damn long. The rent is too damn high, and this was too damn long. Maybe I'm having wrestling fatigue because we did just come back from Philly, and there's been literally wrestling every day this week. <laughs> there's so much. And I I have to echo Iridian. I will be full off of that CC footage for months. <laughs> I will just laugh. This is That's that's like when somebody said dog cows looks like a peeled hot dog. I laughed for months. <laughs> I laughed for months. Not just a regular hot dog. A, a peel. peel hot dog. <laughs> wow. That's wild. <laughs> the last one. That was, it's, it's wrestling. I don't take it seriously. <laughs> I mean, it's a serious business. Yeah, yeah. But I, it's, it's not really. I get you. Next, we have Katsuyuri Shibata versus Lee Moriarty. Mm -hmm. And this match was better than I thought it was going to be. <clears throat> Shibata means business. Ness. If you guys know, you know, and if you don't know, I'm gonna give you a brief summary. Shibata has no business being here like Eddie Kingston. Man's almost died, came back from a life ending injury just to be him again. He was so good before and he's better now. So we have Anthony Agogo on commentary, and I had to look it up. Apparently, he said a rap bar, and I feel I the fact that I had to look it up was upset. Because he said, this man is tougher than Nigerian hair. And I was like, you know what, Anthony Ogogo? That's why Cody Rhodes ended racism on you. I'm sick of you already. I'm so mad. But I was like, no, that's a rap bar. It's okay. It's okay. I'm like, all right. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I stand with my brother, Cody Luther King. Cody Vontavious. <laughs> Yo. This match was great. I think Lee Moriarty got in a lot more offense than I thought we all thought, I think, he was going to get in. Yeah. Um, I will say we got to work on them chops. Or maybe Shibata's just tough. That really? Man. Because, like, the Lee, Lee was chopping this man with all he had, and Shibata was like, <laughs> like, like one of those bad guys in the game, and you shoot yeah. him, you walk it towards you, like, yo, please go down. Like, I don't know, man. What it did you think about it? Shibata is chop proof. You know, some people are bulletproof. He is chop proof. You can't do it. Um, I, Anthony Agogo, I did not know this man was from a different country. Um, <laughs> I thought he was like from Ohio. So when somebody on commentary started speaking with an accent, I said, who is that? <laughs> I was very confused. But then I was like, oh, okay. So I learned something today. Um, <laughs> you know, you and I, we speak the world of Lee Moriarty. And um, we see him as a future champion. Like, mm -hmm. someone could really be at the top of that division like if they gave him a chance and i think that's kind of like a running theme in AEW is that you have a lot of these young guys who kind of have like this like endless potential and you look at like 
Danny Garcia or Wheeler Yuta, Hook, um, again, like Dante Martin and Darius Martin. So even um, Action Andretti. Yes, even Action Andretti. You know, you see these guys and you think, man, where are they going to be in like three, five years? Like they are it, you know, and Lee has great chops. Um, but against a guy like Shibata, he was just eating them. And he would follow up with like a jab and a chop, which I'm like, that's it. That's you're undefeated. Um <laughs> It was so scary to look at. It was at one point I was like, Lee, I you maybe maybe you need the cattle prop for him. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not saying you need him, but like this man was not going down like at all. We get the end of this match. It was a rip cord, and he slapped the crap out of Lee Moriarty, and Lee Moriarty said, "Oh my God!" Knee slump into a rip cord knee kick, and just pinned him. I would not I, even if I had it in me, I would I would lay it out because that knee kick sounded it probably it probably sounded worse than it was, but it, I I went to sleep. Mm. I'm it telling you, some of these things that the wrestlers have to do, like at that point, I'd be like, just don't revive me. Like call yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, no, like jumping at just a touch. Athena low key at one point in that match started abusing red velvet. Mm. I need workers comp just watching that. <laughs> Any match with Moxley and Danielson, I I have pain. I need law. <laughs> yep. Like, no way, dude. No way, Jose. Not me. Um, And then, well, afterwards in the match, we got, like, Shane Taylor, you know, coming in and then beating up Shibata. And I really was expecting Yuta to come out. I genuinely was like, Where oh my is God. really Yuta? Give me a video package. Give me something. Like, I, I need a five-second update. Like, he wasn't even at the Ring of Honor show um, in Philly. And he's from Philly. So I was like... This might be a serious injury. I don't know. But um, I was really expecting Yuta. But I guess Hook was a nice surprise, too. Um, what did you think about Hook coming out to the rescue? So my problem with Hook coming to the rescue is that he pulled the Jeff Hardy. You sauntered. Mm. <laughs> Man's is getting jumped. Like, <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's a lot of wrestlers that's been doing that a lot lately. People get jumped. You hit your music first, and you want to do it. And then you're going to come down. You don't even run. You're just kind of like, oh, I, I'm getting my ass beat. Help me, please. What? Put a little pep in your step. I know nothing bothers you, but please, I'm bothered. I'm getting jumped. With urgency, please. Let's move it along. Like, but like, and honestly, in, your step. in Jeff Hardy's defense, I would do the dance, too. Like, I was, <laughs> I would always do the dance. <laughs> okay, that's it. Makes it's sense. the song slaps. Like you can't not do it. Given the opportunity to do the Jeff Hardy dancey dance, yeah, you do it. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Um, so Hook finally does come out. Shane Taylor flees, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I mean the ending was what it was. I don't know where it's going. Maybe Sh Shibata and Hook. I don't know why though. Like. He came out to help. I mean, Shabbat and Hook got this whatever dude attitude combo going on because they couldn't try to make it work with Orange Cassidy. So that's mm. that's my two cents, and two cents don't make a dollar. Next segment we have is Lexi Nair backstage with Athena and Billy Starts. This, I love Athena. Mm. But I also could not tell you what happened in this promo. Goodbye. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I have one bullet point for this, and it's in all caps. So she said she's going to make an example out of you. Period. That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> My one bullet point is Athena in all caps. <laughs> That's all we needed to know. That's all we, That's need all we needed to know. So now we are back. Lexi Nair was working tonight. Lexi she Nair was, was working. <clears throat> Every segment, everywhere. Lexi Nair was backstage with the kingdom and um, Roderick Strong. Mm -hmm. And Lexi Nair makes a suggestion like, you know, you could say it's you, but you've got a lot of help. And before she can finish her word, he's like, Lexi, how dare you? And honestly, how dare you? <laughs> I'm dead. They look like, like a bachelor party. You know, like it's 27 people and they're all hyping up each other. They're all kind of wearing the same shirt, the same outfit. And I'm like, Collins? yes, I'm like, somebody do something, please. Mess. I don't like that he yelled at Lexi Nair. So your days are number, Roderick Strong. Watch your mouth. Count your days, Roddy. I don't know that many numbers. So you, I hope you know more than me. <laughs> I mean, it was all right. It was a segment. Yeah. Speaking of things that were things, Angelica and Helico versus Daniel Garcia. 
I'm sorry. I don't have any bullet points for this. I just wrote Angelico accompanied by Serpentico. And then that was it. Like, I don't think this did anything for Danny. It sucks that it absolutely didn't do anything for Angelico because Angelico can wrestle. That's, That's a fact. Is incredible. And they just don't give him time. I don't know what it is. Um, and it sucks because he's he's got the look. I don't know if maybe they don't like it. They want to switch it up. I don't know what to tell him. But it's That's really tough. it's it's a shame that he's not being used. And I don't think this did anything for Danny either. I will put out that there, I have my four notes, and I'm going to give it to y'all in succession. I love Daniel Garcia. Dun, 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 dun. But Angelica, Angelico, I keep wanting to say Angelica from Rugrats. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and Helico was like, I'm not feeling that. I'm going to do it. I popped the figure four into the reverse figure four into the reverse figure four. That was cute. Lived for it. Um, the 10 count punch into the... I will always pop for Danny Garcia dancing. I think it's so stupid, but it's also, I live, I live. Yeah, I know people have mixed feelings about that. Like it's a dance, just move along. It's not like it's a dance and he's a bad wrestler. Like, no, he's a good wrestler. So just move along. Let it, let him have fun. You mad that his, uh, his hips move like, uh, I don't know. What, what do the kids do? <laughs> I'm 9,000 years old. I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask me Stop about in the, the comments what the kids do. Okay. I, I, I don't know what the youth do. Um, he gets a leg lock for a submission win on Angelico. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I low key expected Nyla Rose to run out and beat up Serpentico, and I think I would have been more interested in it if that was the case. That would have been hilarious. I love Nyla. I love Nyla Rose. Nyla Rose picking on Serpentico, who got nothing to do with nothing. <laughs> He's just trying to live, man. Now we go to a promo mm -hmm. with his pack. Pat cuts a promo on Okada and says pretty much like, yo, bro, thank you for hitting me in the back of the head. Now I got a headache. And because of this headache, it reminds me of you. And because it reminds me of you, now I'm angry. Now I'm double mad. And I wake up already mad. And I'm even angrier. I'm not pretty like you, but I'm not the flavor of the month like you. And I'm like, that was crazy. Okay. It was like, <laughs> I'm not the tallest. I'm not the most attractive. And I was like, hold on now. Don't speak badly about yourself. Like, you're not ugly, sir. Pac, we have a saying in my friend group that says, don't talk about my friend like that. So, don't do that. Watch your mouth. Don't talk don't about my friend that. like that. <laughs> he also said, like, he wasn't, like, employee of the month or something. And I said, sir, please, you got to you gotta hype yourself up. We cannot be talking to ourselves like this. Exactly. You may be crazy, but we won't we won't allow any Pac slander, even from Pac. Sorry about it. <laughs> I mean, he even called Okada crap, which I was like, oh, that's, that's bold. <laughs> yeah. However... Pac is one of the few people who can call Okada crap. Just like Danielson is one of the few people who can call Okada crap. Yeah. I would even go so far to even say Zack Sabre Jr. can because when Okada comes like, hey, remember when you said I was crap? Remember when you, y'all you, both gonna give it up in the ring. It's gonna be a good match. Yeah. Like, no disrespect. If somebody else was like, yo, Okada, you're crap. I'm like, yo, look in the mirror. Now look at Okada. Now look in the mirror. You got to reevaluate if it was anybody else. But the fact that Pac was saying this, I was like, okay, I'm listening. I'm listening. These two are going to hump at Dynasty, and I'm going to be there. And the fact that I get to see this, what a good time to be here. What, a, what the best timeline? What a good timeline. <laughs> You're going to have a good time, and I'm going to be living through you, through your stories on Instagram. Listen. Drive on down. I know. I know it's uh four six hours away. I looked at. I thought what I thought about St. Louis. I learned a lot about uh, geography. That's what I'm going to say. I learned a lot about geography. <laughs> he said through this experience, I have learned a lot. I thought I was like, hey, you guys are gonna come to Chicago? Squirt, squirt. No, no, no. Nope. St. Louis is close yeah. to Illinois, but Illinois is a big state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next, we had a women's world title eliminator match. Mm -hmm. Now, they did say the rules for these eliminator tournament matches with the champion is if you beat, if you pin the champion, you don't win, but you'll get a title, a, a guaranteed title shot at a later date. To me, that makes no sense. I think you should have number one and number two fighting a situation like that, not the champion. Because who's going to get pinning your champion? Yeah, and then like how many women are in the tournament? Like I I don't understand because I didn't even know there was a tournament for this. Or, or a tournament or uh, whatever it, it is. Like how many people are you going to have? Maybe it was just them two. 
And that was it because there's no way that you're going to have the winners of, of these matches get a shot. Cause then that totally eliminates your rankings. Yeah. So it's like, I was a little confused by this. Same. <clears throat> but this match slapped. I have never seen a Zumi. This was fantastic. That little girl is quicker than a hiccup to quote Jim Ross. She is so fast. That girl is like, bro, like, if you ever seen Dragon Ball Z, she's like, pew, 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 pew. She's so fast. I thoroughly enjoyed this match. I'm going to let you start already. What did you think of this match? I think this is the third time that I've seen her. I got to see mm-hmm. her uh, twice. Um, Wendy Cedar Riot, great. And then also, I want to say that week of WrestleMania, I might have seen her. Um, but man, being 21 years old and she's already this quick and so fast, she's got amazing energy. And I think her and Tony worked really, really well. I don't know what it was, but they had really good chemistry in the ring. I don't know if you know. Yes. That. Um, yes. Great stuff. And I do like the fact that, you know, we're featuring more, more women, especially, um, just good TV time, good amount of time as well. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I want to make a joke, and I cannot stress enough that this is a joke. This is a joke. Remember when we were on here to about 920, a women's match? Bullying works. Tony got it. <laughs> this is a joke. This is a joke. Please, for the love of God, this is a joke. No, like, it's a joke, but it's not a joke in this. In this <laughs> it's a joke, but it's not a joke. <laughs> right? Um, we need more women's matches. And we're going to come on here every week and talk about more women's matches, give them more time. And this was this show did a really good job. We got a lot of uh, women's promos, mm-hmm. um, got good matches. And, you know, Lexi Nair was in there. So Lexi Nair was working tonight, girl. <laughs> we do have a humper chat from Tony P saying someone said it's crazy when AEW brings in names, no, brings in names. No one knows and then proves why they're brought in. Azumi, AZM, is a long list of wrestlers who have done that in this company without a video package, period. She yeah. had a Kentucky crowd going nuts, period. Stardom is blowing up, and I am happy. Yeah. Again, I've never seen this girl. On... <laughs> I wish I had nails, because anyway. that, that match was good. I think it was a short match, in yeah. my opinion, or if it wasn't, it went to picture and picture, then a commercial, and I was kind of miffed about that. Yeah, that sucks. <clears throat> we do have another super chat from the Shades. They're saying AZM is awesome. After the last two nights, she might be one of my favorite favorite women's wrestlers now. Period. I can see it. Yeah, she's really good. She's she to me being that fast and again being that young. I want to see how the young girls like fight each other. Her versus Billy Starks. Come on now. Period. Her versus, really versus Sky Blue versus Julia. Like, let's go. We have all of these options in the women's roster. Let's do it. I want to give a shout out in that match that uh, Azumi did a two giant shotgun kicks. And one literally was almost like a Shane O'Mac coast to coast because she was hitting Tony O like in the middle of the ring and even more towards like the other end of the ring. Um, there was a very innovative pin on Tony Stormer. She had this girl, oh, like it's like almost like an octopus stretch into a floor. I don't know what it was. Call Excalibur. Where is Excalibur? We needed you tonight. Okay? We needed <laughs> the phone in. Like we needed to call a friend. Excalibur, we needed you, man. But that pin was so innovative, and Tony Storm still kicked out. What really changed it was that snap German from Storm out of nowhere, and like literally was a. Really? And then you didn't even realize it, but she, it looked like, and again, this is assuming Azumi is just a good seller. It looked like she dropped that girl on her head. Mm-hmm. She like, she's like, get out of here, little girl. That was really quickly. But I will say they gave the ending away because Tony Storm went in for the hip attack. The screen went gray. I said, oh, we ended, huh? Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what happened. She did the hip attack into the Storm Zero for Tony Storm to win. It was the right call. <laughs> I will agree with Rick here that afterwards, all that extra HLA, listen, I'm here for a free love, man. But what's the point? Exactly. I'm confused. Like initially when we got uh, Mariah and Tony kissing, I'm like, okay, I see like a Mickey James, Trish Stratus yes. thing going on here. Right. But then they're like playing into it, but not really playing into it, but not explaining. Cause like, we know that Mariah's obsessed, but like, 
now we're also bringing in another person and then it's also the same vibes. So what are we doing? And I don't want it to be them doing it just for the purpose of, oh, let's do it. Um, because I feel like it takes away from the storyline because people are distracted and all the men are distracted. So give me an explanation. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm down for HLA, but I want a HLA with it. I need a storyline, man. This is, this is not the hub. I need a storyline. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sean. He's never going to do anything. I'm going to be like, what's going on? I'm, I'm just saying, I need a storyline. I'm, I'm not asking for a lot. I'm not asking for a lot. I, I'm just saying I can get that elsewhere. I'm just asking for a storyline. <laughs> <laughs> Should I play the blue chew ad now? <laughs> you know what? You know what, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> We're going to take a word from our sponsor, Blue Chew, at this moment. We need to talk about your mailman. Doesn't need to know your business. Doesn't need to know you're looking to have better sex. Fortunately, Blue Chew is here. It arrives in a discreet package. But let, let's get back to the start. Maybe you want that performance, that, that edge in bed. Blue Chew has you covered. So, here's the deal. You take their online consultation, and if approved, you get a chewable with the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis for a fraction of the price. Not just that, no awkward doctor's visits in person, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Prescribed online, shipped straight to your door, but mailman's not going to know what's in that package. But somebody's going to know what your package is bringing. Maybe it is the mailman or mailwoman. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe they want you to drop something off by their back door. Well, with Blue Chew, you're going to be able to do that. Use the code FIGHTFUL. BlueChew.com. We support gender-affirming care. Blue Chew, y'all. Snaps. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Next, we have Lexi Nair with Red Velvet. Mm -hmm. My takeaway from this promo with Red Velvet was like, y'all keep looking over me. You come to my show? I'm used to high profile. I'm like, girl, Athena gonna beat you up. <laughs> Respectfully. Athena gonna beat you up. Yeah, I've she seen said- some of Athena's matches. She's been a bully in Ring of Honor. Athena's gonna beat you up respectfully. No, I, I agree with you. She said, you know, mm-hmm. that this was a high profile match. She's like, well, I am high profile, period. So... <sighs> Also, Red Velvet is just so good. And I feel like she's also been pushed to the back. And mind you, I know she had an opportunity tonight um, for a championship. But I don't know. I honestly don't know what they're doing with her. We need to keep her on a high level. And I feel like it's just not happening. I see her in the same spot like Daniel Garcia was in Mm -hmm. right before the Continental Classic. She's a good wrestler. She's, I got a burp and I don't want to be that guy. She is a great wrestler, and I just feel like she's not being given these opportunities, and she's got the look. She's got the talent. Mm. She hits hard, and yes. she looks like she shouldn't hit hard, and she does, and I think that's amazing. I think there needs to be some sort of continental classic for people like her. Anna J is a good reminder as well. Anna I J. mean, they were talking about Yuka coming back as well. These That would be a great place for someone like her, but I was like, girl, I respect, I respect you. You got to have confidence in yourself, but Athena going to beat you up. Uh, (laughs) That's just, that's just real. Mark Briscoe cut a promo. I don't got no notes for this one. I love Mark Briscoe, but I don't know what he was talking about. I know he, I know they got a three, six man, six way, but he was, he was fired up boy. He was bouncing off the walls and I was like, there was too much to process. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot in that moment. I was at that moment I was overwhelmed, and I t- my brain said I'm I was, not absorbing any information. It was too much. It was overload. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna clock out. I'm just. I'm rooting for you, though. I love you, Marcus. Yeah, yeah. I'm rooting for you. <laughs> now this is my favorite promo of the night. Thunder Rosa comes to the stage with Tony Storm, looking like a snack. By the way, her and Serena Deeb ate tonight. Like yeah. the girls always look good, but her and Serena Deeb snap tonight she addressed the crowd and said thank you to all of you guys and i think my takeaway and again maybe this is me being a melvin my takeaway when she turned to the crowd and the fans i think there was so much emphasis last week on throwing shots or on dynamite rather on throwing shots at wwe Mm -hmm. that she took a moment to be like no 
let's get back to the wrestling. Thank you fans for making AEW number one. Thank you guys for believing in us. This is where people come to wrestle. This is the best wrestling place on the planet. This is where all the girls come to wrestle and we wrestle here. This is what we do. So I do appreciate that in comparison to the Billy Goats promo last week shot in the same style with, with Tony Schiavone. Mm -hmm. That being said, Wow, she let these girls have it. She said, listen, Antonia, I don't know what you got going on in this cuckoo bird clock, but I'll beat you up. And you think you did, you think you was doing something by wiping off the makeup? You don't want to see what's under. I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I felt my grandma coming down the stairs with the chocolate. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I, I, in this moment, she made her claim that this is why I never lost it. She also says, listen, I didn't need your help, Deanna Perrazzo. And I think it was very important for us. I didn't need your help with school, with helping people. I didn't need your help when I immigrated. I didn't need your help when I got my sister. I was like, yo, you popping off, Thunder Rosa. This promo was superb. She said, at the end of it all, I'm going to drag you to hell, Tony Storm. I'm like, drag me to hell. I, this was a great promo. What did you think of this, Iridian? I was shook, okay? I was in my seat sat for this because I'm like, all right, I know Thunder Rosa always gives a good promo, but tonight just felt different, right? Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, you know, she talked about how, you know, AEW is where you go to wrestle. It's where they have the, the best. And she's like, well, I didn't get injured because of this, this. Like, she was not playing. She was ready. She called out Tony Storm. Uh, she called out La Virtuosa. Catching strays, okay? Deanna was... <laughs> I was like, girl, why are you talking about Diana? Here we go. I was trying to help you. And you just told her, like, eat dicks. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> that's wild. That's wild. That girl was trying to help you. And then you were just not letting yourself be helped. But this made her look like she's at the top, right? So I'm a little scared. But I'm so ready for what's going to happen. Because I know it's going to be so good. And Thunder Rosa always delivers. Yes. I'm low-key hoping. Like, I think Tony Storm's run as time as Tony Storm has been great. But I want Thunder Rosa to beat some sense into her. Even if Thunder Rosa loses, yeah, I would like to see Tony Storm get beat so bad where she's like, "Am I? Am I timeless? Am I actually from Australia? Like, I want her to have a midlife crisis again. Like, I, I'm low key here for that, and I think Thunder Rosa is the perfect person to do that. She's stiff. Yeah, it did throw me off a little bit when she was like, you know, thank you for watching TBS. Thank you for watching TNT and th like all the channels. I was like, OK, maybe that's a little too much. Maybe it took me out of the world for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I was like, well, you're welcome because I'm going to keep watching wrestling. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> you got me, gal. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this was immediately followed up by Deanna Perrazzo saying, girl, bye, <laughs> girl, bye, you raggedy. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I'm not even going to worry about you. I'm not making excuses. You, me, 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 me. you know what I am going to do? I'm going to break Mariah May's arm. I'm sick of you cosplaying as Tony Storm. I'm sick of Tony Storm. I'm like, as someone who used to cover you in TNA, I believe it. Mariah mm -hmm. May is so talented, so that match is going to slap. But is is there, are they going to let Deanna Perrazzo really put on a clinic? Cause I know she's capable and I, is she going to break Mariah May's arm? Cause I would love to see that. That's just wild. in kayfabe. You know it, what I mean? Like it's going to be so good because Mariah May is also not one to play with. Like she is genuinely a baddie. So I'm sorry, New Zealand. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We're finding things out, finding things out on the line. We're learning screen. a lot today. Geography, geography is hard. Not my best subject either. So we're we're like this. We're really the perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Move over, Lo. You got another rest friend. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah. So okay, that threw me off. Thank you, Dylan. Um, what Mariah May? Yeah. So she's also one that we really have to watch out for. Hmm. So I'm I'm ready. I think Dion and her are gonna put on a banger and i don't think we can underestimate her in a, in a match like this i know diana is definitely gonna win but <laughs> i mean well, i think it's the right call unless you have mariah may win via shenanigans which is okay but i'm i'm spoiled i'm used to seeing her in tna always at top so like this mid card that that doesn't work for me brother xoxoh you know that doesn't work for me brother like i, I, I need more so i hope 
like to me, it would be a great way to culminate Tony Storm losing her title. You're the cosplayer, get your little arm broken. Thunder Rosa beats some sense into you. So, like, to That's me, it's a perfect storm of. So after that, we get some breaking news. Ladder match is going to be now for the FTR versus Bucks for the tag titles. Again, I'm going to be at Dynasty. I want to try to go to the scrum, but I'm going to I'm gonna have no voice. I'm going to be screaming the whole time. I'm going to be fatigued, okay? So please write some questions for me, y'all. <laughs> next we got... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm like, send them in. Those questions, you need them. Because uh, this is going to be me. Like, I have Crest to start from Fightful. <laughs> sorry, I lost my voice. <laughs> We have a backstage promo with Will Hobbs and Kyle Fletcher. I don't know what this promo was about either. I couldn't tell you. I didn't even know they had a promo, so I just had the match. I totally skipped it. Well, next match. <laughs> next car, baby. Next car, baby. So we are now at the main event Period. for Collision. Okay? We got Claudio Casagnoli versus Brian Dan. No, Claudio Casagnoli and Brian Danielson representing Blackpool Combat Club. And we have Will Hobbs and Kyle Fetcher representing the Don Callis family. Soon as that bell rang, the Don Callis family said, psych, we're fighting right now, which I understand. BCC yeah. are bullies. You kind of have to. I respect BCC. I respect House of Black. But we got to jump you because you guys are not nice girls. And we all know how you give it up. And nobody got time for that. It's true. It's true. It's true. This match really picks up in the second half. There's a big scoop slam on Hobbs from Claudio Castagnoli. And you already know we love a big meaty man slapping meat. Um, I'm trying to find where's the best place. I have so many notes for this one. What my, mo what my notes lack everywhere else. I got like two pages of notes for this one match. No, I am the same. I have half of my notes are one page and this is just this match. It was so good. My favorite match of the night. And can I tell you, I was cracking up because midway through the match, I'm like, this is this is a main event worthy match. Like, and then I, <laughs> and then I realized it was the main event. It was <laughs> like it, to to an extent, I kind of feel like we could have just had that for two hours. I, I, I would be real with you. I would be Honestly, real with you. I would have not been mad at that. If we had this match literally go on for an hour, have, you know, the women um, earlier, maybe you start the show off with the women, mm -hmm. and then we could have kept, I don't know, which other match that we really liked. Probably. Um, the Angelico Garcia match. No shade. A little. No shade. A we touch of House of Black and then Top Flight. You know, that. that I mean, that I'm. I am I am a House of Black show. I don't want to get spit in the face, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we could have kept that one. That would have been the other one. Yeah. But man, this was fantastic. The Avalanche suplex on Kyle Fletcher from Brian Danielson for only a two in that last third. Oh my God. Brian Danielson getting caught by Will Hobbs falling, still picking him up and then slamming him. That's hate. He hated that man so much. I had to pick him up twice. Claudio Castagnoli swinging Will Hobbs. I used to say that the angle slam was the most disrespectful move in wrestling because all your limbs are in there. Like, yeah, hey, put me down, God damn it. Okay, on the count of three, let's let's do what what Hobbs did when he was swung. Okay, <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> Don't beat us up, Hobbs. I got your shirt. This is Big Black and Jack. Please don't beat us up. I was so sorry. Claudio had Hobbs in the sky, okay? Claudio are him. They teamed up on Hobbs. Damage was being done. And Blackpool Combat Club was just having their moments, man. When when Claudio swung that man, my mind went to, this is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> if wrestling is fake, explain this. <laughs> explain this. Explain, period. Like, the fact that Claudio was holding this man, who's huge, like, just swinging him like he was nothing, I was here for it. I, I could have watched two hours of that. Every time Claudio swings someone, he got no business swing. Like, I popped the most for Lance Archer because he's nine feet nine, like, legit. And when he swung Big Bill, <laughs> Literally, <laughs> that's so embarrassing. Nice. If you're swung by Claudio, that is so embarrassing. You can't recover. There's no okay, way. I feel like if, but if you are a quote unquote a normal sized person, like from five seven to five ten, maybe even six feet, it's five. 
anything over six feet is demoralizing. It's demoralizing. It's demoralizing. It's demoralizing. It's demoralizing. <laughs> I'm screaming. I'm scrumping even. <laughs> I thought this match was great. This match, I think, went like 20 minutes about roughly. I'm just going to get right to the end. Kyle Fletcher was trying his hardest, and that is your Ring of Honor TV champion who took a neutralizer. Is it still called the neutralizer? I don't know. That's a great question. Where's Excalibur? Phone in. Excalibur, we needed you tonight. Excalibur, please help me. But uh, but yeah, I I kind of felt bad for Kyle Fletcher, but somebody was gonna eat that pin, and I thought it was gonna be Hobbs, but they were like, nah, Hobbs, your, your job is to injure people. And he took out Claudio Castagnoli with that lariat on the outside. I honestly thought it should have been Hobbs just because Kyle, you know, had a successful match in Ring of Honor on, on Thursday. So I'm like, okay, maybe he's going to keep up that win. But like, you can't be like a champion somewhere and then like be eating the pins, right? That's that's how I feel. And I feel like Hobbs wasn't going to lose anything by taking the pin. But I do get it. He's got a match against Claudio coming up on Wednesday. So he might lose then. To the prolonged loss, uh, yes. the late release loss. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I feel like maybe we could have put somebody else in there. Mm -hmm. I screwy finish to Keshna. I okay. Wait, I love to catch that. Him coming out, I made it, better. He, it just honestly made it better. I'm like, this makes sense. Let's go to the You should have caused the DQ in the end for all of that. To Keshta is the leader of the Don Callis family, and I think by order it goes to Keshta, Kyle, Hobbs, and that's Darn. no, no, and that's no shade. Right. But I think that's just how the order is. Like Takesh does the leader of the group. He'd be doing the most. Well, I mean, technically now Billy Goat's the leader of the group. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Don Callis said that's the golden egg. And if I was to catch, I'm like, yo, bro, so what the fuck I was doing for the last three months? Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we get we <clears throat> afterwards, Kanosuke comes out. Hits old boy Brian Danielson with a brain buster on the ramp. Now, I will never forget what, <laughs> what's his name? Oh, my God. Old boy who said he's seven feet tall and you can't teach that. Enzo. Yeah, Enzo. When he said Brian Danielson got a stack of dimes for a neck, that sticks with me. So every time somebody drops Danielson on his neck, I mean, Brianson on his neck, I'm like, wait. Sorry, Danielson on his neck. I'm like, bro, like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. There's a stack of dimes. In there. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. And this is, again, another time during the show where I was like, all right, Yuta, where you at? Like, to catch this here, you got, we need a third. Come on, do something. Because I know Mox wasn't there. But you know, all chanting for Mox and nothing, nobody. So I'm like, man, it's tough for the Blackpool Combat Club. It's even tougher for the Blackpool Combat Club girlies. So. To be fair, hmm. Blackpool Combat Club, much like House of Black, did this to themselves. Because I remember months ago, you were just beating people up. You just... I, know. I, I was living for that. I was like, do it again. I was living for it, too. So now you ain't got no friends. <laughs> now you ain't got no friends. Now you ain't got no friends. <laughs> That's just what it is. Now you ain't got no friends. Now we got I mean, to out. I mean, FTR was doing the same thing. But even FTR got friends. I, I, I know. That's, That's crazy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and that was Collision. They turned the screen black for two seconds and said, we're back at it again. We ain't leaving. We ain't leaving. It's bad little belts, baby. And bad little belts. this is where I have a problem, right? With Battle of the Belts. It has, nobody ever wins. Nobody, there's no new crowned people. I think they mentioned one time that Sammy Guevara has been the only person to have won a title at Battle of the Belts. So it's just expected now that you're watching something and you know the outcome. Um, no matter how great the matches are, you know no titles are going to change hands, which that's the biggest problem of the show, I think. What do you, what, what are yours, what's your opinion about this? I agree with that. No titles change hands. And by the time you come on after Collision, three hours of wrestling that is not a pay-per-view should be should be tried in court. Should be tried in court, honestly. In court? In, in court. In court. Stokely Hathaway is the judge. <laughs> is this like everybody to jail? Everyone's going straight to jail. Straight to jail. <laughs> I mean, like, it's 
I, in theory, it makes sense. And I feel like if it's going to be a battle of the belts, have it be a true battle of the belts. All the belts need to be defended, but that needs to be its own thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I don't need an extra hour, which is really kind of just built around one match. And you know what? When initially, when Battle of the Belts was brought up, I was like, oh, okay, this is going to be another pay per view. And that makes sense, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like, what's, you know, Clash of Champions or whatever it is. But put all of the titles up for grabs and then make it a really amazing show. That could be a fantastic pay per view. Don't put three matches on an hour and then not have anything happen. Yeah. I feel like that's low key was the complaint with rampage when it first came out i was like you want to give me three matches mm -hmm. and it's built around one match and i gotta wait till the end for that yeah bro it's friday night i'm trying to go out it's saturday <laughs> now i'm trying to go out we have things to do <laughs> i gotta be working at 9 30 in the morning and now this this is what you do to me tony mm -hmm. now so, <laughs> let me stop let me stop i end up on cc footage let me stop <laughs> You know what? They they handled it well. I think they gave us somebody who we're like super interested in now in yes. Hook and of course Shane Taylor and Shane Taylor Promotions because Hook was doing some wild things in this match. Let's get right into this. We open up the show with Battle of the Belts with Shibata saying, Hook, with his Google Translate, I got your back. And then Hook says, nah, dogs, don't. And then Shibata just says, bet. And he says, bet. I'm dead. Say less. Say less. They are men of little words, men of few words. Yeah. Facts. Mm -hmm. Facts. <laughs> this was an FTW championship match. So that means FTW rules. They did put on, um, they did say on commentary who won it and like what the rules are, uh, uh, which was no rules. Oh, poor Hook got his nipple slapped off. Jesus Christ, beans and rice. That was rough. That was kind of rough to watch in the beginning. It was real rough to watch. And I respect Hook, especially after what he did with Samoa Joe in that match, lifting Joe up off his feet. But Shane Taylor is built like a refrigerator. That man is a lord. He's a brick. Like, respectfully, respectfully. That man is a lord. He's the meat division. And I believe that you could be a meat one day too, Hook, but today was not that day. I mean, it was. You won. You but. know what? He was wrestling like he was in the meat division. This man was picking him up. Like, Shane Taylor was off the ground. And it's crazy. Yeah. Hook fights like that. He picks up people that are, like, three times his size. And I love that Daddy Magic on commentary still for um, – for this and he was like well how much can hook take we're all wondering that because what what is happening like hook doesn't look like he should be able to put on these fantastic matches and he uh -huh. does like him picking up the win i was like oh okay hook like it duh he was gonna pick up the win but i was just like you look at it and you're just like on paper shane taylor should pick up the win right and shane taylor promotions have been featured prominently across ring of honor and aew mm -hmm. i wouldn't have been mad here but it's kind of one of those things, too, with the FTW championship. If you don't recognize it, what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. You know? I, You recognize it enough to put it on a show, but you don't recognize it enough to have it defended regular. Well, what are we doing here? Exactly. I'm confused. And then I feel like this is why there's the the rumors that maybe Hook is, like, going to explore his options or whatever. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make that face. That's the face I got. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, I get you. Um, I'm excited for his NXT run if that's what happens. I'm here for it. I think he could run NXT. That's that's what I'm going to say, okay? I'm just saying he could run it if that's what he wanted to do. Um, but he is a great FTW champion. But we do need to have that title be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, it's not defended on Dynamite. It's not defended on big pay-per-view shows. Like, Hook, like, what are we doing? What What is Hook doing? We have him in a storyline with Chris Jericho and Taz? Like, just give me Taz and Jericho. Like, <laughs> You mean Taz? I'd rather see Taz and Hook. I'd rather see Taz Ooh. versus Hook. I'm not going to hold you. See, human duplex machine versus Red Rum. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm not going to hold you. I I like Shane Taylor. Mm -hmm. I like Hook. I don't know what this match necessarily did for either one of them. Yeah, it makes Hook look like a tough son of a what? You know, a son of a mother lover. Mm -hmm. But that being said, we already been done knowing, girl. Yeah, and I feel like Shane Taylor promotions, I feel like we need to disband that. I feel like if you're really going to push Shane Taylor, push him. And then... Yeah. Take Lee Moriarty out because that that dude, we know he's a star. Or push him. Or just push, just push the group. Like, push there's him. enough factions that they can beef with somebody. Just push them. 
Exactly. So I feel like they're just kind of right now in like a middle of like, yeah, we'll have them come out together and like be supportive in each other's matches. But then we're not really going to let them like win, which is like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. We're going to get into the final third of this match. Right. Um, there was a big splash on Hook from Shane Taylor from the second rope. Mm -hmm. But that allowed Hook to reverse it into a red rum, which Shane Taylor had hit him with the back, like squished him in the corner twice, then dropped him. And Hook was like, oh, my God, yeah. Psych, I got him again. And started choking him out twice. And this time, Shane Taylor went, Nate, Nate. It was I a good feel, match. Yeah. I feel I have, you know, my, my nose literally like red rum locked in, arrow, corner slams to get him off. But no, plop, <laughs> red rum, release, reapply, Taylor That's passed. plop. Because that's what it was. The way he just plopped, he it looked like it hit a uh, hook in his tailbone. He was like, oh, god damn. <laughs> wow, my Battle of the Belts notes is just one page. Classic. It, it was it was so quick. Yeah, and I don't have anything else. I'm just like, all right, hook pick up the win. Can't wait for his NXT run. That's what I, that's what I, I mean, I wouldn't I I I get the meme, but part of me is like, nor no, imagine. No. Imagine I, I feel like being in a main event scene and then going to NXT. I d see. I don't think that that would be a terrible thing because I feel like he could really run NXT. Um, and like Brian Pillman. I feel. Oh, okay. Maybe this would be. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they did with Brian. Poor Brian. But um, I think he would be great. I think the girlies would eat him up. Ten out of ten. Like I think he would be too. Yeah. I would. I would love in my hardest of hearts. Mm -hmm. If we're fantasy booking, Dominic Mysterio versus. <gasps> <laughs> Tell me that wouldn't be the you know, funniest, man. best match yeah. you've ever had the displeasure of watching. <laughs> With Taz and Ray in the corner? <laughs> <laughs> wow, we really did that. Amazing, amazing. That's a pay per view main event right there. Oh, I listen. If it was Battle of the Mid Car Belts, I would have watched that. I don't give. I don't care. I would have watched that. I would have watched that. I would have watched Dom run around that ring. Like I'm not fighting this little guy. He's crazy. Mm, that's wild. <laughs> he oh, don't even talk. I'm not fighting this guy. <laughs> Book it, you cowards. The truth, I said this earlier, the truth forbidden door is AEW, WWE. Oh, Some of these things book themselves. MJF versus Seth Rollins, that would be the most insufferable match you ever had the displeasure of watching. Yes. And we're all going to be sad. And we're all going to be sad. <laughs> Next, we had uh, backstage with Rocky Romero mm -hmm. and Lexi Nair. Lexi Nair is like, Rocky Romero, you got this thing coming up. But heck all that. What's going on with the best friends? He's like, yo, listen, I got my own problems. <laughs> I got my own problems. I'm sorry. I got I got my own problems. Mm -hmm. And out comes Kyle O'Reilly and says, hey, bud, good luck. And I thought that was weird. I was expecting the king to come out and attack him. Okay. I'm with you on that because when the moment Kyle came in, I'm like, all right, Kyle is going to help Roddy win this match. That was my initial thought. Mm -hmm. um, it was just weird. And I, I want to say a little out of character for Kyle because like, what are you doing here, sir? One of these things does not belong. And it's clearly you. Like... <laughs> You're not supposed to be here. One of these things is not like the others. <laughs> yep. I mean, it was strange, but Rocky Romero is very well liked. Every promotion, and like he's one of those wrestlers that I never hear anyone have anything bad to say about Rocky Romero. Like, yeah, no, he's great. And then um, mm -hmm. yesterday for Windy City Riot, he had announced that he was now um, like a senior VP with uh for for something for new japan in in usa so i was like okay sir period i don't know what you're doing but you do it you do you um he's great yeah he's really good he's so good um i've got a burp again so you gonna do the next one i don't <laughs> want to be that guy so we go into you know roderick strong having this match with rocky romero and of course like i said earlier roddy came out with his bachelor party of of people and I didn't even realize like Matt Taven and all of them were on the side until the commentary had mentioned that, oh, and, and Matt Taven is like losing it on. And I was like, wait, 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 what are we doing? There's just so many people out there. And then Wardlow still out there doing nothing. Like what? I'm, I'm ready for Wardlow to turn on him because even Wardlow's like, this is malarkey. And I've never seen someone in their face. It's like, like if malarkey had a face, it'd be a picture of Wardlow going out to pose with them. Just like. It's like, what are we doing here? He is the one in the bachelor party that wants to go home. 
He thought yeah. everybody was going to be home by midnight. It's 3 a.m. and we still out in the streets. Let's go and home. And we're not even doing anything fun. We didn't go to the strip club or nothing. You guys wanted to stay home and play Parcheesi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what part cheesy is. I've only ever heard of it. <laughs> like backgammon. <laughs> I mean, this match, this match, shout outs to Tony Schiavone saying, was that a one-legged moonsault? Where's Excalibur? <laughs> and much like them, I also don't know any of the names of the moves. So when Roddy lifted up uh, Rocky and then like slammed him into the back of his thigh, I thought that looked rough, whatever that yeah. was. Shout outs to Roddy because if he's gonna do one thing, it's wrestle. Yeah, and, and break your back. Yep, yep. And it looked like you know, um, Rocky's back was broken tonight. Um, I was I wrote in the comments, I am gagged. I'm <laughs> that was in my notes. And I fully did not expect like them to attack. I mean, I, I know they're like a a faction they're the bad guys but i didn't think that after roddy picked up the win that they were gonna still attack the loser of the match that just didn't make any sense yeah. like and he lost pretty decidedly we get we get the win with a big knee to rocky romero for the pin and i gotta <laughs> shout out rocky romero's sliced bread because that was that was almost like wrestling physics because he just went through there and like oops it is i was like so i again i'm being honest with you here this match was all about the post-match, unfortunately, for Rocky Romero, who put up a good fight. Yeah. Um, afterwards, Kyle O'Reilly comes out and congratulates um, Roderick Strong first. Like, yeah, you go, bud. And then picks up Rocky Romero because that's his friend. And then the Undisputed Kingdom attacks Asukar, attacks Kyle O'Reilly. Asukar. I love that you threw that in there. I just got to get in there. The Asukar, the, the sweet, the sugar himself. And it's like, bro, like, why y'all attacking Kyle O'Reilly? He's like, you chose wrong. Like, you bro, know that was I three weeks ago. Get over it. Like, but even if it was three weeks ago, like, bro, you can't, you can't help the man up. It's like he interfered. He congratulated you first. Like, you're being weird. It's that mustache. That mustache is giving you weird powers. It's giving you a complex. <laughs> the fact that Roddy turned on Kyle, like in my mind, I'm like, this is war. How dare you? <laughs> How dare yes. you disrespect Kyle like this? Like, he's going to get you now. And then it's the fact that, I don't know if you noticed, but Roddy, when he was, like, yelling at Kyle, he was, like, trying to find the camera. So he, like, looked up and he was like, oh. And then he, like, saw it and he's like, okay, that's where I'm supposed to yell. But, man, Kyle's going to get you. That's what, I, that's what I'm hoping for. Stop hanging out with these kingdom jabronis and just reform Undisputed Era. Stop playing with me. I've not had the, it with you three. Not the kingdom jabronis. They're going to make that into a t-shirt. AEW is going to be like, whoa. That's what they're going to call the fans now. You but. know what? I am. I have to be consistent, okay? I gave them hell in TNA. <laughs> I gave them hell in Impact. I'm going to give them hell here. You know? I did. At this point, it, stop playing with all of us, all right? It's like having all the members of DX in another promotion, and it's like... It's not making any sense. It's making my brain hurt. Why exactly. is Orlo there? Why is Matt, Matt Taven there? What are we doing? Just put it like Mike, go back to Ring of Honor, guys. Like damn, they, now go back to Ring of Honor. <laughs> they were like it it needs to make sense, right? Like you need to yeah. build if you're gonna have them consistently popping up with Roderick, like I get it, you're all in a faction, but like you have to be featured in your brand that you're at. If they're gonna be on, on AW now just permanently, great. But like put them on that show and feature them and make them you know, make people want to see them. It's just like you just threw a bunch of random people into into a faction. <laughs> Low key, yeah. And this faction kind of feels like a placeholder for Undisputed Era. No, nope. no, nope, nope. that's what it feels like. It's like they're waiting for Adam to come back. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Bobby Fish is doing, but I know they're waiting for him. And then we're just gonna get those four, and it's gonna be like, oh my god, this is what we wanted. This is what it should have felt like. I, and the initial, it's because the reason that all of these guys were together is because they were going to get back at MJF, right? Yes. And then, you know, MJF is gone now, so I feel like they had to really figure out what to do afterwards. And then, of course, Adam got injured, so now they're just kind of, like, trying to figure it out. But you should try to be getting Kyle and Roddy together, not separating them. Someone said Bobby Fish won't be back. <laughs> you know, I have heard that, too, about one Bobbert Fish 
But I will say never say never because he's a thousand years. You know, he's nine thousand years old like me. We were in preschool together. But now he just haunts the docks at the seashore. So <laughs> maybe if we sing the right sea shanty. He may come back. But I have heard that um, I don't think he'll be back. either. That's what I've heard. That's what I have also heard. I've also even, heard that as well. Even for, for a one time appearance. Who knows? I feel like. He was there for a one-time appearance, and that was grand open and grand closing. That's again, I, I, I'm not the scoops guy, <laughs> but I have heard that rumbling that you know you came there one time, and they were like, "All right, that was enough." Yeah. <laughs> Bobby is the man singing the sea shanty. <laughs> when where the fish, where the wrestling go, where the Bobby fish, and they don't, you don't know where the wrestling man and the wrestling go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to the main event. Let's get to the women. <laughs> Lexi there does a backstage interview with Serena D, who mm -hmm. looked amazing. The hair ate. She said, "You could next week. You get an invite to the Deeb Dojo. You could. You about to get beat up. Sorry, 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 sorry." Yeah, I'm excited for that one. I feel like Serena Deeb. I really like the way that she wrestles, and she can really talk the talk. So I'm ready to see some crazy stuff in the ring. Same, same. And I know you could wrestle too, cause that that's a tough. That's a. I don't want to call her broad, but I mean that in the most in the <laughs> utmost respect. Like, like she could take a beating, and she's like, okay, I hear no damn bell. I'm like, okay, whoa, girl, like whoa, whoa. She's 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 a good wrestler. Yeah. We get to our women's world <laughs> Ring of Honor match. Athena, I'm so happy. I loved Athena since she was Ember Moon. I'm so happy for her. This match was great. Yeah. I was also very tired. I, I was exhausted at this point. I'm exhausted now. So I think that if this match would have gone on, much like Rick said, if this would have went on first, that would have been fantastic. Mm -hmm. But I might have said, yo, we're not doing Battle of the Belts this evening. We'll just add this in for extra credit. <laughs> yeah, I I think that that was like a strategic move on their end. They're like, let's put the women at the end and shout outs to them. We love women main eventing. Yes. The fact that they said Athena has gone 49 and zero. And now after this, this victory tonight, she's 50 and zero. that's wild. And I don't see who could be a challenger for her. I'm hoping they keep her to a hundred. Like she could. Yeah. Get the belt. I mean, honestly, I was upset when she first came in and it was her versus Jade and then Jade beat her. I'm like, ain't no way. <laughs> I was, I was, I was upset. spaghetti, but I do like, that we did this. I just read the comment that you had. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's up for your holy mind? <laughs> we love Bobby Fish. We love Bobby Fish over here. I can't speak for nobody else, but I, I, as someone who is also 9,000 years old and got Jesus to kiss her feet, I understand. <laughs> we love Bobby. I'm done. We love Bobbert Fish. <laughs> Those Bobby show for Bobbert. <laughs> <laughs> This match was great. It opened it up with Athena just healing it up, pushing Red Velvet around, and then tried to do the stir it up. Like, yo, you're a jerk, bro. They call her the Forever Champion for a reason. There's a beautiful moonsault on Athena from Red Velvet on the outside. There was an assist throw off the rope to Athena. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but the way that Red Velvet threw Athena off the rope, she used the top rope to like springboard her. I don't know if it was just a face plan. Excalibur, we needed you tonight. We <laughs> telling you, I don't know what he was. They should have hired him for one night if they weren't gonna have Nigel. Like we needed something. And then could you imagine how crazy it would have been because we saw Brian Danielson tonight? Like Nigel would have lost his mind. Not to been booing the whole night. They've been booing the whole night. <laughs> this match was really good. Velvet caught with Velvet got caught jumping on Athena on the outside with one arm and not even like kind of caught because Velvet's foot was still in the air. Athena is so strong. She hits Velvet with the O face for the win. Post-match, we get Red Velvet. <laughs> Red Velvet get beat up because Billy Starks is healing it up. Billy, Billy Starks said, I don't care. Being, listen, it's not illegal to be a bad person, but being a good guy doesn't get you wins, okay? And I'm, I'm out here healing it up. She gets saved by Queen Amanada. Who, that air raid crash on Athena? I was awake for that. But that came a little too late at the end of the match. What did you think of this great win? Man, I thought this was really great. I am such a fan of Red Velvet, and I feel like she doesn't get her flowers enough. But her and Athena really showed up and showed out tonight. I did not expect her to win the title, 
Um, and the fact that Billy Starks afterwards was just like ready. She is ready to risk it all, you know, as a minion of Athena. And I respect that. I respect I it. Too. So shout outs to her. But the fact that Queen Aminata came out, I was like, okay, what are we doing? What's happening? I'm excited. Like she came out head button and yes. that looked like it hurt. Honestly, every week when I do the TNA show, one thing that Reg and Kate will always harp on is how good Queen Aminata's been looking. She's strong. She's stiff. And I see it. I see it. It is It is stuff like this that makes me like, so why didn't we have Athena do this for the AEW title? Mm. I'm sorry, Tony. I, I, Not the immediate I'm sorry. Thing. I got to put my arm away because I'm... <laughs> Like, like, what are we doing? What are we? I'm happy for her. I'm happy for her. Mm-hmm. I am that she's taking Ring of Honor and like we we gonna make it across this finish line. If I gotta drag you, I respect it. But this could have been done faster, sooner, better, stronger. Yeah, and I wonder where this is go. This well, what it means for Queen Amanada, right? Because if she didn't win Bill, if she didn't beat Billy for her championship. Now are we supposed to believe that she's going to beat Athena for the championship? Yeah. Like, what's what's the move? I'm not sure. And then again, like, if we go back to the Wardlow, Will Hobbs, Athena's also another one who could take. You gotta, you kind of got a cattle prod. I'm not saying I'm not again. I'm not saying do it, but Athena, like, you you can't out wrestle her, and you're not gonna outfly her. You're not gonna out technical wrestle her. You're not gonna out strike her. What are you gonna do to this girl? Like you, you, you cannot knock Athena out. What are you doing? You, yeah, <laughs> I'm not saying to do it, but like, yeah, no. With her, it's got to be a numbers game. So, like, let's say if Tony Storm wasn't the champion, right? It would be perfect for like a Tony Storm because she's got Mariah May. It would need to be somebody who's got someone else to help because even then, we got to remember Athena technically has Billy and mm-hmm. she kind of has Lexi. So you need someone with two people. Um, and that's just a lot. I don't know where they're going to be picking these people up. I mean, you've got the whole women's. There's a lot of people, again, going back to Anna J, going back to Nyla, going back to Yuka, going back to, um, I'm trying to think of who is somebody else I haven't seen in like 9,000 years who I wouldn't be upset to see. Red Velvet, you know what I mean? Just tonight. I there, there are ways you can, if we can make a faction for every number, for every color for the men, I'm sure you've got women in the back like, yo, I'm tired of playing ping pong. What's up? <laughs> So. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Someone's like, oh, well, um, they can't have the titles at the same time. OK, but we get it. But you got you got to have them make sense like it, it needs to make sense. We just need a little bit of a story. I'm going to be honest with you. And that's a lie because Eddie Kingston had three titles at one time. And that's our show. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The Eddie Kings had three titles at one time. So <laughs> I hear what you're saying, but use your noodle like it's wrestling. Like <laughs> You you can you they 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 can they can all hold the titles <laughs> at the same time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. This has been the Battle of the Belts Collision Post Show. Iridian, where can the lovely people find you and your work? Yes, you guys can head over to YouTube and go to Rest Friends. That's W R E S T Friends. I just posted the WrestleMania vlog um, talking about the Ring of Honor show that we went to both nights of WrestleMania. I went to WWE World, literally everything. I did it. WrestleCon. I met Nigel McGinnis and he called Brian yep. Danielson a clam digger. I'm and jealous. then. And then he did a little magic trick. So I was amazed. So check that out. Head over to YouTube and then follow me all over social media at Iridian underscore Fiero. Caresta, where can our beautiful fans find you and all of your work? Ladies and gentlemen, I am mostly here on Fightful. Every Thursday you find me with TNA and the beautiful Joel Pearl. I almost called them beautiful. Like, I don't know, beautiful and, and Joel together in one word. Okay, the beautiful Joel Pearl. We're here every Thursday talking about TNA. And every Saturday, it's me, Iridian, and Rick, who's driving home now. Swerve when he's driving. That's why we kicked him off the program. We don't want him to yeah, swerve when he's no driving. No swerving. I'm here with you guys on Saturday. You can find me on my personal pages, Cresta Star everywhere, except for Twitter because Elon Musk is a hater. So it's Cresta the Star, like Megan the Stallion. This has been the Collision Post Show, and we hope you guys have a great night. Thank you so much for tuning in. Fightful Select, subscribe. Don't forget to do so, or else Sean will choke all of you and me. So have a good night, everybody. (laughs) Bye.